What it is, what it do, inside the world. It is your girl, the one and only Ash Said It. Ash Said It dot com. Ash Said It dot com. This is the Ash Said It Daily Podcast Show. I appreciate you guys for all of your love and support. Over 1,200 episodes and half a million streams worldwide. Yes, we're on every major platform. Most recently on the Spotify. You can download us on Spotify and check out your latest episodes. So today I have a guest with me who is another fellow AT alien. Yes, she's another fellow entrepreneur, the beautiful Miss Hannah. Hey, Hannah. Hi. <laughs> How are you doing today? Good. How about you? I'm doing wonderful. Now, Hana, you've got a business that is in the works and hopefully soon we'll be able to, to make some announcements about some, you know, some some big updates. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I am co-owner of the up and coming Snack Shack ATL okay. and you will be able to order us online. We'll have delivery services. We'll have a bunch of different tasty treats that will blow your mind. Mm, sounding good. Sounding good. All right, Hannah. So, you know, we hung out today and we were talking about the B. Smith situation. Uh-huh. Mm. Now, so for my audience that is global, you know, we got a lot of people around the world listening. Who is B. Smith? B. Smith was our, was the black community's Martha Stewart. Mm. So we are talking 1976 on up. B. Smith was like a trailblazer for African Americans. Like she was the first black model for Mademoiselle Magazine. Um, She was a restauranteur herself. She uh, went into retail, like Bed Bath & Beyond. She uh, started a silverware line with them. Um, she went into acting. She's done Broadway and Off-Broadway. And I think something that most people will remember and also relate to, she was also in Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Oh, wow. I didn't realize that. I know yes. that she had a, a, a quite a, the impressive resume. Yes, but ma'am. M- M- Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. You know, we, mm, Mr. Rogers, <laughs> bless his <Right>. heart. Right. <laughs> So we were talking about that situation. I mean, this controversy that has been plaguing the net the last couple of days. Um, where do we even begin? I don't know. Well, that has just, it's a lot of meat and potatoes here. Mm. And for one, what's going on is that B has come down with Alzheimer's and she is in her latter stages. So what that looks like for her is there's no recognition really of anyone, even of herself. And um, it requires a lot of care. So her husband has found him uh, about a year ago. Well, almost two now because it's 2019. So going on two years ago, found him a spouse and he has been living with her. Well, now the spouse has just recently moved in. Mm-hmm. And so he has taken um, a monogamous relationship and made it like a, polygamous relationship mm. and it's even pictures floating around of B and, and the new girlfriend um, the girlfriend is even listed like to the state and everywhere else as a caretaker for her mm. and it was just really sad because to see someone of B's stature to you know I've had relatives family members I know that you have as well that have gone through so many different stages of life and different um, ailments and things of that nature and to see her in that situation really really against her will like she's not aware of what's going on right she is not aware and that is the first thing that came to my mind I was like okay so in his argument he's saying that hey I love this woman I'll do anything for her but I'm lonely inside. This is how it came about. I was lonely. This woman came along. She was not only there for me, but she was there for my wife. And before he goes into that, he states that he show, has shown her pictures of herself mm. and that B did not even recognize herself. He used that as kind of like a way to measure where his spouse is and what caused the loneliness. Like that's where he was left vacant. Mm. However, if you don't recognize yourself, how are you going to recognize a much more complicated situation in your dynamic changing? Yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, it's just, it, it's just perplexing. And I've heard a lot of different arguments about it through the net and through different television shows. I mean, it's just, it's, it's just heartbreaking. Like, even if something like that was going on and people chose to live their life the way they want to live it, why did it have to be put out into the media like this? Right. Why do people need to know and see these things? Right. Why not leave a legacy a legacy? They were fairly private people from what I understood. Yeah. And so why at this point would you put something out there to where, A, she couldn't even defend herself. Mm -mm. And B, is this your public like announcement of this relationship because mm. now people are starting to see you guys out and about now these pictures are surfacing and so what what made you have to have an explanation all of a sudden mm. and I, I think that he deeply cares for this woman and I almost think it's like an abuse dependency yeah. um, she's 53 she's at that point in our, her life you know dating changes as you get older it usually moves a lot faster I'm sure she was not blind to the fact that he's very economically stable mm -hmm. and could take good care of her mm -hmm. and she said in an article you know typically I wouldn't have gone into a situation like this let's take out the money mm. let's take out the statue would she have gone for a situation like this a white woman no Absolutely not. No, she wouldn't. She would have never gone. But she's looking, to, like you said, she's looking at the legacy. She's looking at the name and everything that B has brought to the table, you know, for her family, for her children and the estate. Let's keep it real. Right. The estate. Because she says that, oh, I love B. I love her. I genuinely love her. You don't know her. But you don't know her. And you didn't step into that relationship wanting to love her. Mm -mm. You stepped into that relationship knowing that this was a married man. And that you are going to be a mistress. And the caveat to that is, is, hey, she has Alzheimer's. She won't even really know I'm here or not. Mm. I can live here. I can present this any type of way. But how I, I, on one hand, understand what he's trying to explain. But in good conscience, how is it that you're having sex with this woman? Mm. How you're spending your money on this woman? Mm -mm. And, and your wife is just a hallway away. Mm -mm. And it's just, you know, again, going back to having family members that are older, or elderly, going through different things. It's like the number one thing is that to be there for that person. No matter if they get old and surly and they want to cuss you out because my granddad didn't cuss me out plenty, girl. Right. Ooh. <laughs> you know, right. but the fact that you're actually there to deal with them and their situations and stipulations, that says more. Um, right. You know... Should she, you know, pass on and things of that nature? Okay, maybe then you, you know, you, you know, you look toward a situation of dating again and, and getting out there. But I, I just feel like priorities are not set and B's wellness is not being taken into account. Right. And I think it, it's still going with this new era of convoluted relationships. Mm. Nowadays, we find that more people in marriage and outside of marriage are finding, hey, let me give my spouse that hall pass. Mm -hmm. Let me give them that pass just to kind of maybe scratch an itch or feel a desire. Mm -hmm. So is this trying to redefine marriage mm -hmm. that in sickness and in health, depending on the sickness, I get that pass? Mm -hmm. Or is this abuse? Yeah. Is yeah. this taking advantage of someone who absolutely has no choice, no ability to fight back or even stay. Mm. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, where are her, you know, I'm sure they have kids or something. Yes, so not... and the daughter actually has agreed to the relationship. Only mm. because, from what I'm understanding and reading in the articles, the daughter was a primary caretaker. Mm. And the burden, a lot of the burden was on her. So conveniently... Okay. Mm. Maybe he positioned it and had her come in as a caretaker. See, that's the thing. We don't know how he positioned this mm -hmm. to his family to yeah. even get them to sign up for something like this because she lives there now. Yeah. Up in the house, just like everything is cool. We just one big happy family. That's right. Wow. Right. I, I'm, I'm waiting to see how this unravels. I'm waiting to see as the details kind of come out. And I wish that somebody would, you know, challenge him to an interview challenge him mm -hmm. to those hard questions just to say hey 
how did you present this to your family to where they would be okay? You know, because at the end of the day, that's her mom. Yeah. And I'm sure in her right mind, she would not have agreed to watching another woman, Mm-mm. you know, do things with her father, do this in her mother's face. Because I don't think just because you have Alzheimer's doesn't mean that you can't feel. Mm-hmm. Doesn't mean that it doesn't hurt your feelings. Yeah. You know what I mean? Exactly. Out of this world. Out of this world. But Hannah, we are about to wrap it up, girl. Let everyone know the best way to get in contact with you guys. And of course, you know what I'm saying, when everything launches, we definitely got to have you back so we can talk about that. (laughs) Yes. So when everything launches, we will definitely do a tasting. They can reach out to you if they would like to be on that list. Mm -hmm. If in the meantime, um, they can email us at late night snack shack ATL. So that's late night snack shack ATL. And that's at gmail.com. And if they say that they're from you or mention you, then we'll definitely have some free meals put out there to them and their family and get an invite out to the private tasting. Okay. Y'all know, I know y'all like some free stuff. Yes. (laughs) Come through. (laughs) Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, no problem. Thank you. And thank you to each and every one of you guys that support me, that support this movement. Keep in mind, anyone to tell you that you can't do what you want to do, you look them square in the face and tell them, don't believe me. Just watch. Watch what I do. Watch me make it happen. Watch me make history. That's what we're doing is for the history books. Social media is nice, but real life is way better. Until next time, you guys.